And I think people misunderstand evil. They assume that evil is something that you inflict on other people. I do an evil thing to you because I am evil. And what they miss is that that's not exactly how it works. Evil pre-exists us. Evil's been around since the beginning of time. And certainly the beginning of recorded history, we know that. And it's not something that people simply do to one another. It's something that acts through people. People become conduits for evil. And in the process of doing that, what happens to them? Anyone? Anyone? They're destroyed. The people doing evil do not win in the end. They are destroyed by the evil that flows through them. They are miserable people. And that's kind of the tell, right? I mean, I remember as a kid, you know, reading books about the mafia. And they were bad, and they killed people, and they loan sharked and sold heroin, and they did stuff that was bad. I mean, undeniably bad. But the one thing about the people who ran the mafia, at least in New York, they looked kind of happy, just being honest about it. They did. They kind of retired to some restaurant in Brooklyn and pat their bellies and smoke and laugh and... You know, it was kind of working out pretty well for them before the FBI got involved and they did the RICO. Right? It was. And by the way, there are people who do bad things who seem kind of happy with their lives. But if you're channeling actual evil, if you're trying to destroy people for the sake of destroying them, if you are lying for the sake of lying, for the thrill of telling a lie, and if you are hurting people for the sin of telling the truth, and you're offended simply because it is true, if the idea that somebody somewhere might be saying a true thing enrages you, that's not politics, that's theology. You are a conduit for evil. So the reason I'm going on about this is not to give you some, you know, half-baked theology lecture, it's merely to let you know what the plan is. There is no plan. They don't have a plan. There's not a plan. Why would you, as the American economy sits on the cusp of collapse, when the U.S. dollar is worth, worth less than it's ever been worth, when our debt service is more than our defense spending, and when robotics are eliminating entire classes of jobs for working class people, why would you admit illegally tens of millions of people from the poorest countries in the world with no skills? Why would you do that? Is there some crazy plan the Chamber of Commerce, which is for it, by the way, has, where this is going to, I don't know, make labor cheaper? No. There's no plan. That will destroy the country, and that's why they're doing it. And I think a lot of people who are doing that have no conscious awareness of this. I don't think the staff of the Atlantic Magazine, many of whom I know, wake up every morning thinking, how could I destroy America? the country where my kids live. I don't. But there is no mistaking the effects of what they're doing. It's destruction for its own sake. And so that lets us know that it's not even about the next election, which I think is pivotal. It's not about some political debate between, I don't know, pick the buffoons. It's not about whatever the dumb cable channels are doing. It's about your existence here, actually. And so I'm not going to respond to that. So the question is, how do you respond? What do you do? Well, that's one thing you could do. Um, no, what do you do in the face of something this profound? And, well, of course, you fight back. But what are the tools you need to do that? And the first tool you need, it's not even money. In fact, you could look at successful resistance movements. I don't mean revolutionary movements. Resistance movements that actually have made change in their own country. And some of them are unarmed and penniless. I mean, you know, a hundred years of the Raj ended pretty quickly under a nonviolent movement in India. And, like, how did they do that? And they did it because they sincerely believed they were right and they were strong inside. They were strong inside. That's the key. So how do you become strong inside? Well, you're getting warmer, baby. You get strong inside, and this is a non-sectarian point, which is open to people of all backgrounds and faiths, because this is a truth of the universe. You get strong inside by telling the truth. And 
but 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 really telling the truth really telling the truth not just some truths but being completely honest all the time not just in your public facing life but in your personal life now what does that mean one of the huge misconceptions about telling the truth is that it applies to your descriptions of other people and that's not the case the hardest truth and that's very easy oh you've gained weight not a hard call I personally have heard that before it's not hard to point out other people's shortcomings and honestly you take a kind of perverse cruel thrill in doing so sometimes and telling the truth can be a cover for cruelty to other people I'm just telling you the truth yeah, you suck that's true okay great that's easy and it's not what I'm talking about telling the truth means the hardest truth of all which is telling the truth about yourself being honest about who you are it's the commitment to stop playing a role it's the it's the commitment to living honestly and that means revealing who you are without shame not posing at all at all about you and you will find if you attempt this the first thing you'll find is how unbelievably you dishonest you are <laughs> I tried this <laughs> It's sort of like a low carb diet. It sounds easy, then you realize, actually, I really love Reese's. I just do. I'm sorry. And you didn't really know how much you loved Reese's until you went keto, and then you're like, all I care about is Reese's. And then you realize, like, you, you really are kind of disgusting. <laughs> and telling the truth is the same project. If you wake up and you're like, I'm just going to, in every statement I make, in every word that my lips form, I'm going to be honest, particularly about myself. When I make a mistake, I'm going to admit it. When I describe something, I will not exaggerate, not even a little. I'm going to tell the full truth. And there are some things I don't express. Because telling the truth does not obligate you to unload the contents of your brain on anyone else. And there are some things that are ugly and probably best kept inside your own head. Because freedom is impossible without privacy. So you can maintain privacy within your skull. That's okay. But the words your lips form should be utterly true all the time. And if you do that, you will find swelling in your breast a power of unknown origin, but still unmistakably a power, a strength. You become stronger. More than if you ran the Iron Man, you will find yourself empowered in the truest sense. You will find that a force moves through you and other people can feel it it comes off you in waves like a jet engine on a hot day you can see the weird distortions in the sky and they will back off it intimidates people it scares people if they know that you're strong inside it doesn't mean you know you have to be huge or ripped or whatever drinking that weird protein powder that all the kids drink not that I'm against it I don't know what it is but anyway um, check the ingredients on that by the way it's the parts of animals you're not supposed to eat. That's just a guess. Anyway, um, but anyway, um, no, it's a real strength. It's a moral strength, not a self-righteousness, which is the opposite of moral strength. That's always a signifier of weakness. The guy who tells you how great he is is weak inside, because why are you telling me that? I'll decide. I know how good you are, because I can smell it like a dog can smell it. All of these perceptions and all of our deepest perceptions come to us at a level above words or maybe below them but certainly outside of language we know what people are about when we're in their presence when we watch them your dogs can't speak English I mean mine can but yours can't um no but really a dog knows who people are instantly because they can feel it and so can you the distance between a human being and an animal the distance between our society and the animal kingdom is very small and we lie about that we've been lied to about that for whatever reason but that's totally real and you have those powers too and so does everyone around you whether he knows it or not and so if you are strong inside people will make way for you and that's important because we are entering a period of real volatility I mean clearly of real volatility